The movie starts in an orphanage home on a stormy night, when a boy wakes up to the frightening sound of thunder and lightning. He gets out of his bed and rushes to the kitchen, only to be terrified by a shadow of an old man. Next, they're seated in a lounge room, and the old man, whose name is Remy, starts telling a story about his childhood. As the old man narrates the story, the movie shifts to a small French village named Chavanon, where Remy lives with his mother. His father Jerome works in Paris. Remy has a cow named Rosette, whom he loves the most. The boy is living happily with his mother, but difficulties soon arrive when they get a letter from the father. Jerome has had an accident at work and was sued. In order to pay the lawsuit money, Remy's mother has to send all of their savings and even sell Remy's cow Rosette, the main source of income. Remy is devastated to let go of his cow to a cruel neighbor who often tortures Rosette. Thus, he visits her every night at the neighbor's shed. One night, Remy is caught by his neighbor, so he immediately rushes to his home. When he arrives, he sees that his father Jerome has unexpectedly returned from Paris. Jerome is bitter and penniless, having lost his trial. Additionally, he isn't happy to see the boy. He starts to scold his wife for still keeping the boy at their house as he's now become too much of a burden, considering their financial situation. Jerome insists they give Remy to the orphanage. From their conversation, we realize that Remy is a foundling, someone who was abandoned by their parents as an infant. Later, Remy's mother tells him his backstory. Ten years ago, Jerome was on his way to work in Paris when he saw an infant at the church door. The infant was wearing very fine clothes, so Jerome guessed that his parents are rich. He then decided to take care of the child, hoping to get a good reward afterward. He took the child home to his wife and named him Remy. The mother adds that they still have Remy's blanket that they found alongside him, hoping that his biological parents will be able to identify him with it. Remy is scared as he doesn't want to go to the orphanage. His adoptive mother tells him that she won't let that happen. The following day, Remy wakes up to the good news that his adoptive parents have decided to go to the town hall and ask the mayor for money for having raised Remy this whole time. This way, they can get the finances they need and Remy doesn't have to go to the orphanage. Elated, Remy leaves with Jerome to go to the town hall. But to his surprise, they are not going to meet the mayor. Jerome had lied to his wife about the town hall so that she would let him take Remy away. Realizing that he's being taken to the orphanage, Remy runs away. Jerome insists the whole town chase the little boy until they end up in a bar. The commotion is interrupted by a traveling artist Vitalis and his troupe, consisting of a performing dog named Cappy and a monkey called Lovely Heart. When Vitalis learns of Remy's situation, he offers to rent the boy for a year with Jerome. Desperate for money, Jerome gladly agrees with the arrangement. The movie shifts back to the present, where the old Remy is surrounded by more children who are interested in hearing his story. In the next scene, Remy leaves his childhood home without even a chance to say goodbye to his foster mother, who would have done anything to prevent the transaction, and starts a journey on the roads of France. Vitalis is a kind man, certainly better company than Jerome, and teaches Remy to sing, play the harp, and read as well. Once he's able to write, Remy begins sending letters to his foster mother, detailing his life on the road. Remy also learns that Vitalis used to be a great violinist back in his days. As time passes, the pair goes on to perform among aristocracies. One day, they get a chance to perform at a small river ship on the occasion of the owner's daughter's birthday. There, Remy meets with Lise, the daughter. Lise has a rare condition of coxalgia, because of which she's wheelchair-bound. The two kids quickly form a bond, and Lise's mother is happy that her daughter finally has someone to play with. But soon, the local police arrest Vitalis for making the animals perform, which is against the city's laws. Vitalis is taken away while Remy continues to stay at Lise's. While Vitalis is away at the prison, Remy and Lise's friendship grows deeper as the little boy becomes the main source of support for the sick girl. Remy also shares his backstory with Lise, showing her the blanket he was wrapped in when his foster father found him as an infant. 
Vitalis finally returns one day, and Remy immediately gets off the riverboat to give him a tight hug. Vitalis is invited for lunch by Lise's mother, who tells him that she wants to keep Remy. The little boy can be a personal butler to her daughter. Hearing this, Vitalis understands that it would give him a stable life for Remy, but he wants the little boy to explore more about the world. Regardless, he tells Lise's mother that it's Remy's choice to stay or leave with him. As expected, Remy decides to leave with his master, but bids a painful farewell to Lise. He promises that he will visit her soon. In the next scene, we see Vitalis and his troupe exploring France as they sing, dance, and perform to fend for themselves. However, tragedy soon arrives, when one night, they're attacked by wolves in the woods. Lovely Heart is fatally injured, so they spend the night at an inn nearby. The doctor says that the monkey doesn't have much time left to live. He also diagnoses Vitalis with tuberculosis, as he has been coughing blood throughout the journey. But the old man doesn't reveal the illness to Remy. Since they do not have enough money to pay for the room and treat Lovely Heart, Vitalis decides to put on a show, hoping that the hotel guests will give them a reward. Later that evening, as the guests are seated for the show, Vitalis plays a violin and unveils his exceptional skill. He is proudly applauded by his audience and is also able to gather some money. As Vitalis and Remy are collecting their silver shillings, a young woman approaches them. She tells Vitalis that his performance was similar to a show she attended as a child, where a renowned violinist performed. Realizing that the woman might have guessed his true identity, Vitalis tells her that he's just a mere performer who's picked up some skills from famous people. Although the woman doesn't seem to believe his words, she leaves a gold coin for them. Remy is more than excited to have received the gold coin and goes to his room upstairs to show it to Lovely Heart. Sadly, the monkey has already succumbed to his illness. Remy, Vitalis, and Capi prepare to leave the inn when they get a letter addressed to Remy. It's a letter by Lise, who wrote to inform that her mother identified Remy's blanket cloth. The material is only owned by the aristocracies of London, so she sent letters to her friends hoping to find Remy's parents. A barrister named James Milligan replied back, stating that he knows Remy's parents. Remy jumps in joy when he finishes reading the letter. Wasting no time, he, his master, and Capi set out to meet James Milligan. In the next scene, we see that our heroes are seated in a meeting with the barrister, who examines Remy's blanket cloth and confirms that he is indeed the child he was looking for. James informs Remy and Vitalis that Remy is the long-lost son of the Dorsal family. The barrister then takes the pair to Remy's supposed family home. There, Remy meets with his parents, who are overjoyed to see him. Later, the Dorsals reveal that Remy was taken away as an infant by a woman who wanted to take revenge on them. Apparently, Mr. Dorsell was having an affair with the woman, but when she found out that he was married and his wife was expecting a child, she set up an evil plan to take away their baby. Vitalis isn't very convinced of the story, as he knows that Remy's foster father had made it clear he had seen a man leaving the infant in a casket, not a woman. Mr. Dorsell remains silent for a while, but James fills in, saying that the man could be an accomplice. Vitalis and Remy then bid a bitter farewell to each other. Before he's attended by James's carriage, the barrister provides some money to Vitalis for caring for Remy all this time. Once his master is gone, Remy runs upstairs to his bed and weeps bitterly. He wakes up in the middle of the night as water drips from the ceiling. He takes a lantern and goes outside to see that it started snowing. Slowly, Remy looks around his new home, but nothing feels right to him. He notices a cupboard, and when he unlocks it, he sees something dreadful. There are gold-plated human teeth, as well as numerous watches that seem to have been stolen from other people. Remy is quick enough to realize that the Dorsells aren't his real parents. When he prepares to run away, Mrs. Dorsell arrives just in time to give the poor child a nightmarish threat. Remy manages to escape to the front door, only to be stopped by James and his men. He tells them that the Dorsells aren't his family, but it seems like James already knows of this, 
So he shoves the boy inside instead as he and his men wait outside for the job to be done. Once inside, Mrs. Dorsell orders her husband to kill the boy, as that was what they were assigned for by James Milligan. As Mr. Dorsell raises a hammer to slam the boy, Vitalis and his dog Capi arrive just in time to save Remy. While Capi manages to grab the Dorsell's son by his neck, Vitalis incapacitates Mr. Dorsell and demands an explanation. It's then revealed that James Milligan is Remy's real uncle, who is due for an inheritance since Remy's biological father died. But when he found out that Remy was still alive, he didn't want to risk the inheritance, so he ordered the Dorsells to get rid of the child. However, this wasn't the only time James had ordered to kill Remy. Ten years ago, he was the same man who ordered that infant Remy be killed. However, Mr. Dorsell couldn't kill an innocent child, so he had left baby Remy at the church. Grabbing him by the neck, Vitalis demands to know about Remy's mother. Mr. Dorsell reluctantly reveals Mrs. Milligan's address. Vitalis and Remy quickly leave the Dorsell's home to look for Remy's mother. But they are still faced with a great challenge ahead when it starts to snow profusely. The road is filled with snow and to make things worse, Remy falls ill on the way. Vitalis manages to carry his little boy as he shields them through a snowstorm. The pair, along with Capi, take a rest near a shed for the night. But Vitalis' health is also worsening. Remy wakes up the following morning, held tight in his master's arms. But when he tries to wake up Vitalis, he shows no sign of movement. Remy begins to wail, which alerts some security guards nearby. In the next scene, Remy opens his eyes to find himself tucked in a warm blanket. He looks around and sees a woman standing next to him. She asks about his health and informs him that Remy's master didn't survive. Devastated, Remy begins to weep once again as the master was the only family he had left. The woman then asks her servants to look after the boy properly. She heads outside to find James Milligan in her lounge room. Turns out that the woman is Mrs. Milligan, Remy's biological mother. But she doesn't know that Remy is her son. Not surprisingly, James doesn't reveal the boy's identity and demands to take him away. Mrs. Milligan informs him that the boy can only be taken once he's back on his feet. Meanwhile, one of the servants goes through Remy's belongings and finds a paper. She shows it to Mrs. Milligan, and this is when Mrs. Milligan learns the truth about her son. Remy later wakes up and visits Mrs. Milligan, who confronts him about his past. The paper she found earlier had a song lyric that Mrs. Milligan's mother would sing to her when she was a child. And when she had Remy, she too would sing the song to him as a lullaby. It turns out that Remy somehow had the song engraved in his mind unconsciously and would sing it when he performed with his master and the troupe. The mother and son finally embrace with a tight hug. The movie then shifts back to the present, as the now old Remy finishes telling his story to the children. They inquire about what happened to his uncle, James Milligan. Remy replies that his uncle was taken into custody and later abandoned from England. Vitalis was given a proper funeral, and Remy also visited his foster mother. After his foster father, Jerome, died, she moved in with Remy, and with the help of his foster mother, he opened an orphanage that houses the current children. In the final scene of the movie, we also learn that Remy eventually married Lise, and they still live together with the orphans.